Welcome to the Rick Ramos Podcast, Chicago. Boom, we're live. Chicago fighter Josh Hernandez welcoming Josh Hernandez. Josh, you are first, you are our first uh, um, guest on our show, I guess, right, Jess? Yeah, officially, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. me, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honored, man. Appreciate no, it. No, no problem. We definitely want to have a lot more people on the show, Chicago people, not Chicago people. And, you know, there's no time limit, there's no restrictions. You can swear, you can say cock balls, you can do what you want. Um, we just want the truth. We just want everything. I want everyone to have fun. I want everyone to speak their mind. And, you know, if there's, if there's love that you got to give, give it. If there's hate you got to give, spit it, you know, and, and that's kind of how we do things. And, you know, uh, this is why we create our own platform to say the things we want to say, you know? So welcome. Yeah, thank you. So June 6th, you returned to the ring after yeah. about a year and a half off, right? Yeah. 18 months about. Uh, the Rona kind of screwed things up, not only for you, but for the whole boxing scene. So you got some time to rest, got some time to get uh, your boxing situation in order. This will be the first time you represent Rick Ramos Boxing, uh, June 6th in Atlanta. Uh, shout out to Marty Hill. Um, so how do you feel? Talk to me. I feel great. I feel like it's a fresh start. Um, pretty much the way I'm looking at it is like a pro debut all over again. Um, and I'm ready to get the ball rolling. That's good. And, and how is training camp? And how is it alongside of working with Jessica, working with other amateur fighters? Because there's a lot of amateur fighters in our gym. And, you know, there's a couple of pros and, you know, there's pros in and out of our gym. But how is the overall vibe? Like, what do you think? And tell us how you feel. Um, the environment is special mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, no one's slacking. Everyone's doing their work. Um, you can't really tell oh, that's a pro fighter or that's an amateur fighter because everyone's doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, we go in there, it's good vibes, good energy, good conversations, um, and a lot of hard work. And as a fighter, that's all you can ask for. Right. So, you know, and, and I think, you know, it's very, very important to create the, the right vibe and have the right people. I mean, you're working alongside Jessica McCaskill. Obviously, Jessica is undisputed champion of the world. Walter the champion in the world. So, you know, there's amateurs, too, in our, in our gym that are running the same program, that run on the same program as Jessica does, and they have no fights. So yeah. you're definitely seeing amateurs with no fights competing against national champions. And, you know, there's people who come, and there's people who, you know, com compliment, and there's people who comment saying, hey, how many fighters does your girl got? And I'm like, none. And they're like, yo, that girl's a beast already. Yeah. So the way, the way I see it is, you know, to be in a, in, a, in a boxing gym with a world champion there watching you spar, watching you hit pads, it doesn't matter if it's male or female. Right. You know, she's a world champion. She, yeah. <laughs> she got a lot of belts. <laughs> so when you're sitting there and, and she she's giving her time to just watch you work out, that it's, it's very mo motivating. Um, and it gives you kind of um, an idea of where you could be if you stay dedicated. Right. So where, where do you want to go? Like, what are your goals? Like, from your next fight to six fights from now? Yeah. Um, I want to move from, you know, I've been pro for four years, a little bit more than four years. Um, and I, I haven't had that team to really monitor and move my career in the proper way. Mm -hmm. I'd like to move from um, prospect status to, like, contender status. Uh, I've already fought some, you know, guys that are world champions, ranked top 10. So I know I'm, I'm ready for it. And, and what do you think that, you know, we, you know, meaning our gym provides and, and what do you think that, you know, we can add to Team Hernandez? Stability. Um, and I can rely on the team. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of stress off of myself and my father as well. Mm -hmm. And it allows my dad to just train me. He's not worried about necessarily looking for my next fight, needing to keep me busy, talking to sponsors now everything is just like up 
Call Rick. <laughs> yeah, well, and, you yeah. know, a, a lot of people don't know this, but like at the first Cecilia Breakhouse fight in Tulsa, you know, you almost had an opportunity. You were, what, 24 hours away, 30 hours away from fighting Mark Castro. You know, that, that fight could have almost happened. It almost happened two times, to be honest with you. So, you know, I don't think a lot of people know that. So, you know, the, the Mark Castro fight could be a fight in the future. Um, you know, if all everything works out, if he keeps winning, if you keep winning, that's definitely a possibility. But, uh, Jess, how do you feel having new people in the gym, having uh, new vibes, um, new people to spar with, new people to talk to, new opinions? Like, how do you feel? What, are, what is your reaction? Well, it's really funny because if we're talking specifically about you, Josh, Josh and I used to spar like... It feels like it's weird to say, but back in the day, you know, like there's some really young pictures out there of us after we just got done sparring. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if you, we had been I don't think we had turned pro yet. I definitely don't. Um, but so it doesn't feel like you're new, you specifically. But um, having you around regularly is is different because we got a gym full of girls. So it's good to change it up a little bit. And, you know, we always spar with men. So it's great to have you as uh, a part of our sparring team when needed, um, because you definitely bring a different aspect to the table. And, And like he was saying, we have girls in the gym that, you know, have zero fights and, you know, they're already like top level because they spar with you. They spar with other pros. They spar with really clean, sharp people. And so they're going to go into their first fight looking like a million bucks. So um, I think it's a great dynamic that we have a body shot and we've always tried to keep it that way and, and protect, protect that vibe. Right. So, okay. So I agree, first of all. And second of all, like, let everybody know, like, what's your background academically? Like, what, what part of the city did you grow up on? Okay. You know, what high school, what college? Like, tell everybody what you're doing. All right. Well, um, I'm Puerto Rican. And shout out. <laughs> shout out to Puerto Rico. Shout Gotta out to Puerto say Rico. that, man. I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. Uh, my mom's Puerto Rican. Dad's Puerto Rican. I'm 25 years old. Grew up on the south side of Chicago. Boom, south side. Cubs fan. Yeah, okay, okay. Go Cubs. Um... I went to Chicago Bulls College Prep. It's Great a, school. A Noble Street uh, Charter School, um, right by, right there on Damon, across the street from the United Center. Um, four years there. Then I did four years at uh, DePaul University. Uh, decided to stay here to focus on boxing. I turned pro at 19. I had 54 uh, amateur fights, and oh, my major. We'll take a step back real quick. My major at DePaul. I became a PE teacher, so physical education. Um, I had a choice. It was either exercise science or physical education, and I decided to go with physical education part just because I uh, enjoy working with the youth, working with kids, um, watching them grow. Um, And I feel like I feel like I could help them progress, not only physically uh, with like exercise and things like that, but also, we have a lot of deep conversations in PE. Now, do you think being now? now let me be clear. Josh Hernandez is a school teacher. Yeah. So you are you are teaching in classrooms. You are teaching yes. in gymnasium. You are yeah. moving around with the kids. I so teach pre pre K to eighth grade. So yeah, it's a, a big wide big range. spectrum. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and a lot of people don't understand like having a, you know Jess has a day job. Luckily, she's remote, so she's able to make some adjustments. I used to have a day job. I'm retired. Shout out to Jessica. Um, so now it's, you know, Jessica. There you go. There you go. There you go. No, so it obviously and historically Chicago boxing is kind of a part-time job for almost everybody. So like we've had to figure out, we meaning all of us, boxing managers, coaches, promoters, it's been historically a part-time job for everyone. So I think like if you see Chicago kids making it, it's 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 almost better because you got to remember like Jessica, some of the people that Jessica beat and fought, and some of the people you fought, like they do this full time. Yeah. They didn't knock you out. They didn't beat you. Some of them didn't beat you, yeah. and they do the shit full time. Yeah, you know. So like, you know, they say you know, oh, so and so's this, so and so's that. Like Cecilia Breakhouse, this is all she does for a living. Jessica got fucking six jobs and beat the fuck out of her. You see what I'm saying? So like. <laughs> That's what people don't understand. So that's why I get so passionate. A lot of people are like, yo, fucking Rick's crazy. Like, he talks shit. But, like, if if I'm your manager or your coach, I'm going to fight for you. And I'm going to fight for every dollar. I'm going to fight for every every rule, everything. So 
Um, let me be clear, Jess, you are a school teacher and you're doing this fighting thing full time. So you have two full time jobs, correct? Yes. Um, you know, typical school schedule, Monday through Friday, um, worked eight to three. Mm -hmm. And then I train after and before. So uh, it's got to get done. Uh, we, we take uh, we take the sport very serious because we know what could happen if you don't. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I give it my all every time I'm out there. But it's all about the preparation. And the team and the preparation. They always say, like, Chicago, or they should say, like, boxing is a very lonely sport. And I think, you know, Jess and I try to be very, very vocal. We say it's not a lonely sport. It's only a lonely sport if you make it a lonely sport. You know, I think a lot of people think it's uh, – it's only a one-person team, and and really you need strength conditioning coach. You need um, some people have the doctors on the team, massage therapist, coach, uh, nutritionist. Yes, assistant coaches. Like there's a lot of people. There's other teammates that are holding mitts. You know, family members that are holding mitts. You know the deal. So it's like, yeah. if mom got to get in there and give you water in two rounds, like she's ready to go. I thought you was about to say spar just now. You sound like you was about to say spar. <laughs> <laughs> mom got to throw hands. She got to throw hands. Yeah, fuck. I mean, no, for real. Like I feel like. You know, our whole team, like, from our amateurs to the pros can, you know, work corners for all of us. And, and that's one of the things, like, I want everyone, like, all of our staff and, and team, everyone involved to be able to do multiple jobs, you know. And I, I also think it's important. feel <clears throat> that what's different about the team that we got over there at Body Shot is that everyone is willing to do it. No Absolutely. one feels forced. Um like if if I gotta step up and work a corner, then that's what I'm gonna do. I have no problem doing that. You know, it's we all have a, a team with a full of team players. Which yeah, is great. and and you know, so so when we go out to June, you fight June sixth. It's a Sunday, and the girls, the amateur girls fight June fifth, right? And Summer fights June sixth as well. So you know, Josh, you, you and Summer are gonna work the female corners if need be, and assist Jess and myself. And if they fight each other, we'll we'll fall back, and you and Summer work the corner. So yeah, that's a really good point. And I think that if you have a team who puts their egos aside, we can get a lot done. So I think that's extremely important. I think everyone realizes the the opportunity that's there just for you know the learning opportunities and learning the business and learning how not just to be the fighter and because you know you get there and you're sitting there putting your shoes on and everybody's doing like 10 different things and you kind of feel like left out like well how can I learn to do that or what are you doing and, and why is that important so there's so many learning opportunities and nobody wants to be left out of that yeah and I think instilling that mindset is huge like when Eddie Hearn brought those big shows to Chicago and Jessica fought on them you know, we had, at the time, Kim Carlson running around to go pick up run errands. We had Matt Hambrick covering the gym. We had Summer covering the gym. You know, meanwhile, you know, I'm on the phone trying to get the biggest money, the best be the best hairdressers for Jessica and <laughs> Summer. And it's just like everybody's working. I think it's huge. It's so important. And that, while that was going on, Jess was able to relax and handle 100%. business. 100%. And I feel like... Uh, we're on the flip side, before, you know, we're, before working with you now... Um, my father, he intended it for it to be that way, mm -hmm. but it's just him and my mom. So mm -hmm. a lot of the times I ended up doing the running around too before fights. Yeah, it's tough. Um, and I feel that a lot of the fighters that you're working with are blessed to be in that situation where you're kind of removing all stress and you're saying, okay, just focus on the win, get the win, and then you can do your your thing after. Right. Like we have Mike Flores. Shout out to Mike Flores, who's a videographer. Shout out to Jennifer Alvarez. She's the photographer. You know, Jess and I cover a lot of in-between stuff. I mean, we're sitting here, you know, trying to build a podcast. It's shout out to all the people who watch and subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, make sure you subscribe. You know, we're going to have a lot of cool shit. And, and if there's a guest out there that you guys want, let me know. Comment on the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your cousin, sister, your neighbor. Tell your ex-boyfriend and girlfriend, too. Oh, my God. So, like, <laughs> like for real, like, as far as, as far as coming up in the game, Josh, what, for the young fighters, like, what do you think that you can tell them that a young fighter who just turns pro today, what do they need? Because a lot of, like, I think a lot of fighters, like, there's some kids in here with one one pro fight or barely a pro fight, and they want to make a whole documentary. And I'm like, dude, you got 16 amateur fights, and you want to do a documentary about a documentary about yourself. You haven't done anything yet, so let's just focus on winning and do come back to the documentary. What would you suggest to brand new fighters? 
you know, it's funny because I just had that same thought. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people are so focused on, you need social media. No doubt. You need it. You need to have your face shown. You got to have the hype videos, the training video. You got to do that nowadays in this market. But that doesn't mean anything if you're not winning. Right. And if you're not putting on good performances. Um, I, I know I'm speaking. I, I got three losses, but every fight was dramatic for sure. It was dramatic, close. Yeah. And, you know, and I have two of my losses, you know, I, I don't agree with, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, but, right. But as far as a young kid, I say you got to remember that what's going to take you to the next level is your technique and your skill. <laughs> and most importantly, the mental. You know what I'm saying? You got to work on your mind. You got to strengthen your mind. That's your, your strongest tool. Um, and it's not all about likes and followers. Right. That'll take you far. But, I mean, you know, I think Ryan Garcia is a great fighter. I think he's great for boxing. I think he's doing great things for boxing. Yeah. But he, look at the level he's at, and he's forced to pull out of fights because his mental's not there. Yeah. You got you to gotta handle that before you, you get to that level. Right, for sure. And, and I think a lot of fighters, if you're an amateur out in the game and you just have one amateur fight, just start building, a, like, a like a photo booth of yourself. Like, make sure people can watch your journey. Tell the story with one picture at a time. Don't be like, yo, I'm going to be the next Ali. You haven't fought in five years. You see what I'm saying? So, like, don't tell me I'm going to be the next Christy Martin and, and you, you're low, you're two and two as an amateur fighter. Just just focus on winning. Get to nationals. Start winning tournaments. Start winning your local tournaments. Start doing the, the little neighboring uh, state tournaments. Start winning those and just start branching off. And I think a lot of people... You know, at least in Chicago, I feel <clears throat> a lot of people might disagree. A lot of people might get mad, but there's people like want their ass kissed in Chicago. Like you want people to like kiss your ass. And I think because of a lot of trainers in Chicago let fighters get away with so much shit that they make they like they enhance that like delusional atmosphere that that is above their head. And I think. I don't, I, fuck, as a coach, I won a WBC coaches, but I got eight world titles, and I feel like I haven't done shit. You know what I'm saying? Me and Jess are like, fuck, we got to do something. Let's fucking start a podcast. Like, I feel like I haven't done shit, and we, and I own a WBC fucking coaches, but like, and no one in, in Illinois, or I don't even know in the Midwest even has one. I'm the only dude who has it, so like, I definitely don't feel like I've done anything yet. So I think a lot of people got to pick up, pick up their game and, and make restrictions in the gym, and it starts in the gym. You coaches got to be strict on your fighters. You know, you guys show up 10 late for sparring, 10 minutes late for sparring, get the fuck out. Everybody knows that. That's me. Everyone's like, Rick's a dick. No, motherfucker, I want to win. Clearly, you don't. Get the fuck out. See what I'm saying? One thing I like that, <laughs> that you said in a previous episode was um, all of your fighters have a small amount of fights in state. They, you know, they yep. can do a lot of com- competition, a lot of mm-hmm. competing uh, nationally. Um, where most of their fights take place and I thought that was great and also the idea of like um, oh you could have like myself you could have 54 fights but you're fighting the same kid five or six times yeah and I, and I think it doesn't benefit you no and I think a lot of people that comes from like having like a vision right like I think you know certain coaches in Chicago not just Chicago like or everywhere like they're, they might not have been I don't know, let's say academically smart enough to figure out like the best route. And that's okay. That's fine. But that's why you bring in smarter people because I'm not the smartest guy in the world.
difficult. So um, tell us how you how you get through it day to day. Tell us oh, some ups and downs because there's people that are going through it now and, and they just think, OK, I'm going to give up and go get like a city job or like I'm going to go work at McDonald's because boxing is, you know, tell us about how to fight those urges to quit. It's not <clears throat> this is not my first long layoff either. Yeah. Like I had. I believe a 14 month layoff and the worst part about these is that it's not my choice yeah it's just business and then or my luck yeah or pandemic you know what i'm saying so right. um things you you just can't control some some of these things and for those fighters that that think may, might be thinking about giving up um, I'm not I'm not them, but what gets me through it is just, you know, my faith and my hunger and just believing that I'll, I'll put it this way. The other day I, I looked at my dad and like, I can't die happy if I don't live my life to my full potential. Yeah. As far as boxing. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I understand. And that. I feel like I have so much left in the tank. And so much to give physically, mentally, and just like so many doors that are that are left un unopened by me right. that I, I, I can't just walk away. And that hunger, it sits in my stomach and I can't sleep at night sometimes because I want it so bad. So that's just me. Right. But, you know, other fighters, they their situation might be a lot worse than mine. They, you know. Look, I haven't fought in 18 months, and, you know, I'm very grateful that you, you're still, like, giving me the opportunity to work with me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and th things like that is not everyone has that. So for me in my situation, I'm very grateful. For other fighters, you just got to keep pushing, and you got to stay active on social media, and you never know who might call. I mean, look at the situation with Andy Ruiz and Anthony Joshua. He yeah. stood ready. You always got to stay ready. He got a phone call, and he <laughs> yeah, boom, his whole life changed overnight. Yeah, yep. yeah. We were, Come on, now. We were lucky enough to be there. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy, and and so even too like a lot of the things too. I think you have to have, and I and I can't stress this enough. Like you have to have creative people around you. There's also the BKB. There's also maybe an MMA fight for certain people. You might not be the best boxer, but you might be an MMA dude. You might, uh, you know, might go pick up 15, 20 grand and, and BKB. You might, you know, be lucky enough to get a phone call from Triller. So there's opportunities for, for people who are creative. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, if there's no fights, doesn't mean that you don't have to fight. You know, you can definitely go to a smaller promoter and, and, and you know, pay for your own fight if you have to and, and just stay busy. Yeah. You know, it's very important to stay busy. And then work on your craft, obviously. You know, I feel I've improved a lot and i will continue to improve right and you look at someone like canelo who's you know, pound for pound right now yeah and he keeps getting better every fight <clears throat> yeah and I, I don't think you know I, canelo said something to me or not to me said, said something in the interview that i picked up on i think it was yesterday or the day before he's always in a gym so like like he said this is his whole life jessica's always in the gym this is his, her whole life so you know you know i always say this to jessica and sometimes doing mitts just gets obviously repetitious because we do reps of the same combinations over and over again and you know i understand it gets frustrating sometimes but ultimately when you're dead tired ultimately like when you your brain shuts off you know your your muscle memory kicks in and those same combinations still flow mm -hmm. and i think like without that kind of training canelo wouldn't be as good as he is jessica wouldn't be undisputed so i think you know it's very very important to stay in the gym and stop blowing up 35 35 40 pounds before every between every fight yeah. you know what i will say did you see errol spence <laughs> yesterday i did but did he look big man he looks good dude like ripped you're saying like like he's still skinny. been working out yeah yeah like yeah. I, errol's one of my favorite fighters and he's crazy talented yeah no doubt and um just to see like, I remember after the accident, then he came back and beat Danny Garcia. Just to see him at the fight yesterday, yeah. they gave him, like, you know, a five-second. In the like, crowd, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. looked good. Yeah, and, and again, I think it's very important. If He's, he's got to be staying in the gym, but, you know, I think it's very, very important to stay in the gym and, and not blow up. Because a lot of fighters only go to training camp to lose the weight, and they didn't work on anything new. And I think those are the fighters who, you know, lose... Uh, all five of their belts, all six of their belts to people who were in the gym. So very, very important to stay in the gym.
Do you have any other questions for my man, Josh? Um, yes, give us some, some of your thoughts of how you balance your day. I know people ask me a lot, and so I would like a different perspective of, okay, you got two full-time jobs, and um, you kind of have to create your own schedule to make things happen. You know, tell us a little bit about that. Well, it all, it all starts on, like, Sunday. Mm -hmm. You, you got to plan your week out before the week even starts. Um, and you got to have the discipline to do that week after week after week. Um, but me, I'm a very routine kind of guy yeah. and I, I enjoy working in that method. Um, so like groceries have get done, you know, on Sundays and then I have, I <clears throat> had to be more strategic with like strength conditioning and recovery time. Like I do my strength conditioning at a place where I can get my recovery right after. Right. So it definitely saves me some time. Um, and then, you know, sparring sparring is set up ahead of time. Everything is just in its place. It's knowing what you're getting yourself into before the week even starts. I feel that that's the most important thing. Yeah, it's, so you're saying, and I agree with you, having a routine, having it planned out, making little tweaks if you need to, having a backup plan is huge. You know, I think it's very, very important to have, you know, like <clears throat> a lot of people don't notice, like we, were, we, we plan to have you fight one guy and that guy pulls out because he's too big. We already had a plan B. So, and we have a plan C. So in case that guy backs out, we have a third guy. So I think it's very, very important. <clears throat> you know, this, this fight, I think you're going to be much more relaxed. I think, you know, you, you're staying in a nice big home. You know, I got homes for all the fighters and I think, you know, I try to make the atmosphere as comfortable as possible because I want victories. I want us to go 4-0 and when we go out there. I'm excited. I'm excited um, cause, because of everything you just said, man. It's not, it's, you don't got to worry. You don't have to worry about nothing. You just w w focus on the fight. And even though you might not tell me, well, I know when I go out there and get this victory, you already know what's next. Yeah. It, you, you're ready. And, and that mentally as a fighter um it's very motivating it's not um oh win this fight and we'll see what happens yeah no and, and the possibility of being on the undercard of jessica mccaskill versus xyz is, is there for you is there for Summerland, and it's there for all the fighters who are underneath the rick ramos boxing stable so there's i'm always thinking of a bigger opportunity you know we'll see what happens with jessica hopefully we find out this week what's going on with the katie taylor fight what's going on with clarissa shields cyborg whatever opportunities that you know we choose hopefully that gets settled this week so to go into the next fight for you you know what could be right behind door number two so it is exciting um it is like it, it motivates everyone mm -hmm. and i also think like you know <laughs> it makes you wake up uh it makes you go to bed earlier so you get rest for the next day it just i, I think it, it it adds everything to to the pot and you know it's time to serve serve that meal you know it's we serve a, man, it. it's a it's a spark um because sometimes um the worst the worst part about the layoffs is the downtime you're like well why am i doing this yeah it's like my thing is sparring sparring is important so for preparation right. um but when it's 18 months of sparring then it's like i'm sitting there like i'm over here you know putting on shows for free yeah for sure. <laughs> in the gym you know Take, what i'm saying taking punches for free yeah too. it's just like you know then that's where i feel fighters get to a point where it's like ah uh, you know i just pick up a full-time job and walk away yeah um and and the crazy thing is i i never once considered that yeah because I, I believe that that i'm not finished yet no and and that was one thing that we, you and i had talked about i'm like yo josh you got to stay in the game you know, you owe it to yourself, you know, forget about us, you know, just you owe it to yourself, you know, and forget about anyone you think you owe. You just owe it to yourself and, and make sure you keep that, you know, in the front, the, you know, in the front in your thoughts and make sure that you execute. And I think there's big things ahead.